Vacation ruined. Hey everyone, welcome back to Child Free for Life. Don't forget to subscribe to be a for lifer. Having to use the debt account again, my sister straight up told my mother that she's stalking my main Reddit account, so that one will be message spamming and ask Reddit for a while until she gets bored and gives up. My mother booked a holiday back in 2020, nothing massive, just a cabin in the woods for five days so we could spend time together in the peace and quiet, and I could try my new camera out. The original plan was myself, her, my brother, his girlfriend, and the dog. My brother and his girlfriend would just go and do what they want all day so they weren't really a problem. But then the pandemic happened. The place gave her the option of rebooking it for this year or a 50% refund. Not wanting to lose most of her money, she rebooked it. About a month before the trip, my brother split up with his girlfriend and no longer wanted to go. I originally was excited. A vacation with no one but my mother and the dog? Sounds great. But then my sister got wind and wedged herself into the holiday. Her, her boyfriend, and her one-year-old screaming banshee of a baby, same baby I mentioned in my one previous post here, the one that ruined my late birthday. As you can expect, the whole vacation suddenly revolved around the baby. Everything had to be child-friendly. The kid had to come everywhere, even to crap that it obviously would not like, like four plus hour long walks, bee walks, we went out and were showed the apiaries and told about bees, I adopted a hive, and freaking wine testing. It would not stop screaming and yelling and throwing things both inside and outside. Our poor dog, our other dog passed away before the trip, so this was our new dog who we adopted a few months prior, was constantly being chased around the cabin and hit with his own lead because my sister couldn't control her kid. I kept having to hide him in the bedroom with me as I tried to get some semblance of quiet. Thankfully, he's only a chihuahua, so he's very easy to scoop up and take out. At one point, I was playing on my Switch in the front room and she grabbed it, so I pulled it back, and she just started wailing because I'd taken it off her. I almost immediately had to leave because I was having a migraine. I have ridiculously sensitive hearing. That kind of noise right next to me is torture. My sister got all moody with me and told me that I should just let her play. Frick no! I spent two years saving up for this thing. I'm not letting your kid anywhere near it. Then of course, there was all the times my sister expected us to babysit whilst her and her boyfriend had alone time. Of course my mother did it, but I'm not gonna babysit your health spawn because you two wanna drink wine in the hot tub. Piss right off. I didn't get to spend any time with my mother either as she was constantly with them. I spent most of the holiday taking the dog out on long, long walks far, far away from them, which hurt for me because I have chronic pain, but I needed to get away from the noise because my head hurt so much. And I barely slept over those five days. Yet they expected me to be up at 8 a.m. every dang morning. The first thing my mother said to me when we got back in the car to leave was, next time I'll book two cabins. I hope there never is a next time. If there is, I won't be going if she is. LOL, let her play. She was either gonna smash it on the floor or put it in her mouth. It's a one-year-old. She doesn't even know what play is. That was my exact argument. She was either gonna chew on it and mess it up with her spit, or she was gonna throw it on the hardwood floor and break it. Which I think was more her plan considering the first thing she did after grabbing it was look down. She was throwing everything around. It was so infuriating. Ouch. Sorry I had to go through that. My first thought was, Chihuahua? You have to be careful with such a tiny dog and kids. Kids sometimes don't measure their strength or understand it yet, and tiny dogs can be fragile. So just there, I would have bailed. Or hope the dog got mad so the baby could learn the lesson? My second thought was, I usually leave with a headache when I visit my friend that has an eight-year-old. Maybe parents are used to those sounds, but to me, the constant, mommy, mom, mom, screaming, fighting, crying, etc., drains the life out of me. I return home looking like the crypt keeper, drained of energy, looking for absolute calm and quiet. Yeah, he's a chihuahua and a very nervous one too. He spent a lot of time running away and hiding. Thankfully, he's not a biter, he's a shaker and loves to sleep under duvets. So I take him into the room I was sharing with my mother and let him sleep under the duvet whilst I play my switch or read. Yeah, when my sister visits, even when I don't go downstairs at all, I have a headache. But this was five days of non-stop hell. In the day, she was screaming, throwing stuff, and shouting. And at night, she would get up at random times, disturbing all of us. Pretty sure I got less than 10 hours total sleep over those days. 
My mother was raised with bigger dogs, so she thinks he's a lot hardier than he really is. Whereas chihuahuas are all I've known. Them and cats. Plus, you know, I actually sit down and do research because I like to be informed. He does have a harness, numerous ones. In fact, we don't walk him on just his leash. He barely fits a collar, and if he got off, he'd be gone. He's still in training. The Banshee wasn't allowed to hold his leash when he was out walking. There's no freaking way I would allow that to happen. My sister's kid kept picking the leashes up because I kept putting them up where she couldn't reach them, but they would move them because we're not as tall as you. We can't reach the leash up there. Went inside the cabin and was basically swinging them around like a whip. Because the dog would run, she would chase him with it. If she cornered him, she'd smack him with it. And if not, she'd throw it. So my day would be spent watching. The moment she picked up a leash, he's ran and I'd go after him, scoop him up and close myself and him away in the bedroom. The vast majority of parents suffer hearing damage or loss when babies are first born because babies basically scream directly into the eardrum at 115 decibels, louder than a jackhammer, 105 decibels. It will cause damage after 15 minutes of exposure, just sitting near the child. There was a really interesting study done that I'm too lazy to look up at the moment, but I think it was the Center for Hearing Health, but it was ignored because it's not nice to point out how infants irreversibly damage their parents. Your sister is a, mm, I won't type it here so as not to insult you. I'll start with inconsiderate, opportunistic leech, and save the rest for your imagination. I totally get the stress from the sleep deprivation. That is real. Some vacation. And I'm here for the poor chihuahua, which your mmm of a sister doesn't seem to give a crap about. But if your family adopted the poor little chihuahua from a rescue group, if they're worth their salt, then they certainly give a crap about how people in an adoptive family are allowing toddlers to abuse the dog. Yeah, lurkers, I said abuse. It isn't just a child having fun. It takes very little to crush a chihuahua's windpipe or break his leg. Not to mention the dog, not the GD toddler, is the tiniest one in the room. The one who is on the floor the most and therefore is towered over by everything and everyone in the room. And he's experiencing real fear and uncertainty and disruption of his safety. I have a chihuahua and yes, they can shake from excitement, shake from cool temperatures if they have short hair, but also they are very emotionally sensitive. I really can't tolerate people like your sister. Thank God the dog had you. He's going to need you to look out for him as that kid gets bigger and stronger, as it seems your sister won't care. Everything in the room exists merely as a plaything for her brat, like the switch you paid for and have a right to not have slimy toddler drool on. And especially, the chihuahua is not a toy for any brat, and his physical and emotional safety must be ensured, no matter what. He is a living, emotional being who can experience pain and fear. Oh, you can call her whatever the heck you want. I hate her and honestly do not care. Yeah, I seem to be the only one that gave a crap about the fact that the dog was spending most of his time trying to get away from her while she ran around screaming and laughing with his leash in her hands, waving it about. But God forbid you took it away from her. I did several times that my sister just goes nuts about how I'm ruining her fun. And she's just a baby, let her play with it. I took the dog out pretty much every day just to be away from her after having him basically hiding behind my back on the first day. My mother just thought it was cute and he's not being hurt, he's just being a wimp. She literally whipped me across the face with that freaking leash. I understand completely our last dog that passed away was a chihuahua. It's a coincidence that we ended up with another when we were finally able to look, he was offered to us. And our old chihuahua broke his leg after my mother let him jump off our very low sofa so I'm super paranoid about our new adoption. He's even smaller than our first one was. Thankfully, my sister doesn't live here, so the dog has home safety. But he comes straight up into my room whenever they come over before they're even through the front door, so we conveniently go for a walk for as long as we can. The situation with my switch ticked me off because her boyfriend used to own one and the brat broke it. But he earns enough that he can just buy another one, no problem. I live on disability and money's very tight. It took me years to save up for that thing. And I know she wouldn't replace it. She never replaces anything her or her banshee break, and there is quite the list at this point. Oh.